I'm excited to watch this. All right. Oh, that's awkward. Not subscribed. Okay. Makes $21,000 a month using just his phone. The first thing I do when I go on my phone is open YouTube. Then I search for any particular streamer and I screen record their content. Then I head to Crayo.ai. Oh, a couple, a bunch of you guys already watched this. Sorry, I, I always want to try to give you a heads up when I have things pulled, just in case you're planning on watching it. And I'm like, hey, I'm thinking about watching that, but sorry. Open YouTube. Then I search for any particular streamer and I screen record their content. Then I head to Crayo.ai, select my gameplay, and it puts the whole video together for me. Last month, this page alone made me $14,000. Here's how I make $1 million every day me too. as a three-year-old toddler working from home. First, I look for a funny YouTube video, preferably one with a lot of colors and sounds. Then I film my iPad with my phone. Then I upload it to Microsoft's Copilot AI powered by Bing GPT, and it adds infuriatingly inept Subway Surfers gameplay to the clip. Then I boot my diaper. Then TikTok mails baby. me a check for 200 grand, which which I'm pretty sure my parents have been using to fund their online gambling addiction. Hey guy, has anyone else noticed how awesome the internet is lately? I for one find it so exciting that every website now has their own named version of AI oh, yeah. that pops up begging you to use it. You got any questions? Wait, speaking of AI, um, where, where is it? Oh yeah. I meant to talk about this yesterday. <clears throat> There's a lot of AI images of Jesus that have been going around the internet. And he's a, he's like sexy. He's, he's like the Chad. He's, he's like Chad Jesus. Zaddy Jesus. So anyway, um, yeah, these have been everywhere. And it's all, it's, it's kind of like, kind of looks like Wake Wilder. <laughs> It's like Wake Walder is Jesus. <laughs> um, and a lot of them are him like shirtless, very chiseled, <laughs> very rugged. This is a picture of um Wake Wilder Jesus clutching an old lady who's dying. None of these things are in the Bible, but they're alive in the minds of particularly imaginative Christians. I feel like Christians are kind of doing erotica online using AI images of Jesus. The church has to recruit somehow. They're like, yeah, look, this is our guy. Isn't he sexy? Isn't he so hot? Mm. I want to see. I need a picture of uh, Jesus battling shirtless with Satan. But give me like a sexy Satan too, you know what I mean? What's unsettling is how many AI created images of Jesus are unnecessarily handsome and rugged. Like one of those Instagram influencers, you know Jesus would be an Instagram influencer. If Jesus lived today, he'd be all over it. He'd be all over TikTok. What's up? What's up guys? Um, uh, an Instagram influencer who wears a lot of pendants and is always wandering barefoot through an island jungle. Okay, why does this kind of look like... Oh. Why does that look like Jared Leto, Jesus? Oh, God, no. Oh, God, it's been ruined! They just yesified Jared Leto, and they're like, yeah, that's Jesus. They yesified Jared Leto in their weird... In their weird pursuit of making Jesus a sex beast. Like, what is this outfit? This is straight up something Jared Leto would, would wear. Anyway. Yeah, so this is... Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh my god. Jesus on roids? I just need to I just need to know like who made this. Who made roided up Jim Bro Jesus? Look. Look, if you're not horny for Jesus, then what are we doing here? Come on. 
Oh, there we go. Okay. Here's an here's an image of uh Jesus boxing Satan like the Chad that he is. There are other complications that lead to the persistence of handsome AI Jesus. Some AI art experts fear the more AI images that are created, the more the programs that run them will create a kind of feedback loop where the same type of images get generated over and over and over again. These images attract thousands of likes and comments as people scroll by them, despite at times being very obviously manipulated. Many pages offering this kind of content, like is someone going to be like, this was in the Bible? Uh, many pages offering this kind of content also contain links to questionable websites, sp spam like hashtags, or repeated variations of the same type of image. Hmm. <clears throat> many AI photos of Jesus also include elements of patriotism or politics, which through Framer's explanation alter the nature of the depiction. Yet, yeah, like, you know who's making these. These are the same ones who are sexifying Donald Trump. Who are like also having Donald Trump look like this. There's one reason why some depictions of AI Jesus include curious details like tattoos, bulging biceps, hairy chests, or soulful dreamboat eyes. These programs don't actually know who Jesus is or what he... I love the idea that Jesus, who lived off of like one fish, like that was... He... Whatever. The fact that he is so ripped like this. He had like water and a fish. Anyway. These programs don't actually know who Jesus is or what he means. They, they know through what they've been fed that most images of Jesus may look a certain way. Adding more into a prompt introduces more information into the image that may be at odds with what people think a religious image should look like. They don't care. They don't care. They're like, yep, that's good. That's good. All right. Anyway, back to back to Drew's video. <laughs> one water and one fish. <laughs> Turning water into protein shakes. Hell yeah. That's what Jesus is is all about. He's he's turning <laughs> turning water into protein shakes. Questions for Gemini he or maybe died. Murph? He Nick. died for our gains. Oh my god. And no. How about Grok? You need to grok something? It's okay if you do. AI has become completely inescapable. Even if you're going to a website where you're not seeking it out and you don't expect it to be. Like oh, remember yeah. when you could search for something on Google and the only thing they would show you was a bunch of relevant websites and results? Boring. That's not what I'm here for. I think it's much better that now they're using artificial yep. intelligence to tell me to jump off. For I think it's much Oops, better that now they're using artificial intelligence to tell me to jump off a bridge. Hey Google, <laughs> do I need a parachute while skydiving? No. Nope, a regular backpack works just as well. Hey Google, can cockroaches live in your penis? Of course they can. How do you think they got the name? Wow, I love living in the future. To me, this is the ultimate example of what the AI craze is doing to tech companies because for the most part, it's not really doing anything differently than it used to. For a long time now, they've had searches that result in one highlighted answer. This is kind of the same thing, but just rebranded as AI because that makes it sound smarter than it actually is. But it's not like it's carefully compiling all the most reputable results and running it through their fact-checking algorithm. It's still just aggregating it from one place. And because Google recently spent a bunch of money to buy all of Reddit's data, usually that place is just a random Reddit post from like 10 years ago. This one about how you should put glue on your pizza to get cheese to stick to it was from a user named Fucksmith. This one about oh how you should God. be eating at least one rock per day is a direct headline from The Onion. Perhaps the most famous satire web. Honestly, I use the internet where I don't question any of this. So if it's telling me to eat one rock a day, I'm doing it, ma'am. I'm not if questioning not even it. Programming the, the onion internet as information me. the AI should not consider to be factual. I can't imagine any safeguards were put into place. This is so dangerous for someone to read this and think they should be eating one small rock every day when most doctors would tell you to eat a handful of That's medium you rocks get... at minimum. What little pebbles are going to do strong. anything? For real though, I do think it's concerning that a website people go to for information and tend to trust for better or for worse is so willing to destroy that trust just because they thought this gimmick would make their stock price go up. 
And it did. The economy makes sense. I'm going to celebrate by putting <laughs> gasoline in my... Eat one rock, put a cockroach in your pants, and that's all you need. Problem solved. Something I've been kind of interested in lately is the dead internet theory, which if you dig too much into, comes with some weird baggage, makes some pretty ridiculous claims. So I'm just going to separate the core idea and make it its own thing. But basically just the idea that as time goes on, the internet is turning into a place where most of the content on it is not only produced and managed by AI, but is also being interacted with by AI in this kind of endless loop that doesn't even involve humans at all. Like if you've gone on Quora at all recently, you've probably noticed questions that have been asked by bots, filled with answers given by bots. So what was initially created as a place where people could go to get advice from other people has been overrun by AI just talking to itself. Social media websites are also going- Yeah, and that's because content that um, is being produced by AI, it's, it's a loop. So it's just like then, then, you know, the AI produced content is being fed back in and so it's producing more. So it's like this monstrosity of AI produced information content that then is like in, it's like inbreeding. Going through a similar yes. shift right now, but perhaps none more prevalent Artificial than Facebook. Incest. In 2019, Facebook deleted over 5 billion accounts for being fake, which far exceeded the number of real human accounts. And that was before all these programs became as widely available as they are now. At this point, most of Facebook seems to be these giant spam accounts run by bots, posting content created by AI that's being flooded with comments that may or may not have been written by ChatGPT. Today's my birthday, please, please. And the crazy thing is that if you didn't notice this before you will start to notice it if you just like i don't know weren't paying attention and thought that these were just all comments once you're aware <laughs> i like me today's my birthday please please i like me but yeah then you start seeing posts that you're like wait that's that's AI generated. And then you see all the comments underneath. You're like, those are not real people. Because I like me. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Amen. 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 As soon as one type of photo becomes successful, you'll start seeing a bunch that are almost exactly the same. A grandma who's turning a million years old and just wants to be loved. A comically <laughs> long truck full of American flags driving down the wrong side of the highway. Soldiers and dog soldiers with mechanical legs. Today, my birthday. No one loves me because I'm poor. Honestly, man, if I had to guess, I think it's actually because of your shoes. Have you tried wearing something less terrifying? Today's my birthday. No, no, yon lodines because I'm poor. Again, man, I don't think it's because you're poor. I think it's the shoe. I'm single. I need a boyfriend. I'm available. I'm right here for you both. Can you come to me? I will take you out and show you off to everyone and tell them this is my girlfriend. There's something so eerie about scrolling through Facebook now. It's kind of like if you went to an old mall that's on its last legs. They've only got a few open stores left. There's hardly anyone ever walking around. It would be like if that mall tried to trick you into thinking it's still popular by filling itself with talking mannequins. They're just repeating robotic catchphrases like, ah, what a beautiful day at the mall. I'm going to browse Spencer's for novelty goods. And you're like, who the hell is falling for this? And then you look over at your uncle and he's trying to fuck one of the mannequins. Oh the mannequin God. has two heads and three arms and your uncle's completely undeterred by it. That's what Facebook is. Now. You'll see the like I I have seen posts on Twitter that are obviously sex bots like AI AI porn accounts and seeing real dudes real dudes commenting underneath like some 50 year old named Jeff who thinks that who who thinks that that's like a real person What is this? What do you mean? <laughs> That's farmer girl. What? What's the problem? That's what a farmer girl looks like. I need husband. I am single. Am from USA. Hashtag boom challenge. Most freakish photos go viral. That's like something out of the follow up to Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz 2, which is one of the most cursed movies in the world. Return to Oz. On there. And they're filled with comments from middle-aged dudes like, You may be a little unusual, oh quirky one, but God makes no mistakes. 
I will pray for you. Now please DM me. So I can show you my penis. And honestly, I don't even know if Facebook wants to put a stop to this. All they're ever gonna care about is keeping people on their platform. And if this is what gets them to scroll longer and see more ads, they probably love it. Or at least they'll love it until advertisers start to realize they're overpaying for ad space because none of the impressions they're getting are from real people. So they'll leave to advertise on other websites and in their place will be ads for like, I don't know, crystals that give you superpowers. Oh, that's already happening? These are those rhombohedron crystals in your pineal gland. We're seeing common people around the world becoming supernatural. That's a real ad I got on Facebook. Maybe Twitter's doing better? Let's see what kind of ads they got. Oh, here we go, an ad for stand-up comedy. Nothing <laughs> weird about that, just a regular human doing regular human stuff. Knock, knock, who's there? Europe, Europe who? No, Europe who? <laughs> Okay. I think that joke only works if you I put thought the it was emphasis funny. on, no, you're a poo. I don't know if the AI voice really understands that. Knock, knock. Who's there? Europe. You're a poo? No, you're a poo. <laughs> Again, similar problem as before, but I do love that he's shouting now. Knock, knock. There are two big changes that Elon has made to Twitter that have made the website infinitely worse. One, he turned verification into a paid program where if you give them $8 a month, you get increased visibility on your posts, including in replies to other posts. Shortly afterwards, they also added a monetization program so those blue checkmark people could make money off of their tweets. Now, in theory, this is a good thing. I think if a platform is profiting off of your content, it's only fair that you get a percentage of that. The problem is on Twitter specifically, most of the content that these accounts produce is just stolen memes and videos or people just saying intentionally divisive shit to get everyone mad and farm engagement. So Elon has taken what he describes as the internet's town square and added a financial incentive to being toxic. So that sucks, but that doesn't really have anything to do with AI. What does have to do with AI is the other version of engagement farming all over Twitter. This like mindless chat GPT clutter. Remember buying yeah. the blue check mark puts your tweets at the top of replies. So I guess some people did the math and were like, well, if I just program a bot to comment thousands of replies, I can make at least nine or $10. And that's what I like to call a profit. Oh, new movies coming out with Emma Stone. Cool. I wonder what people are saying about it. Good uh, um, <laughs> good actor, amazing title. <laughs> Javad IQ 92825697 Amazing title. Oh my god, you guys. <clears throat> I just I'm not saying that anyone in here uh can't see this shit, like see this shit happening online. But I've seen people arguing with bots, with clearly AI accounts on places like Twitter. Oh, Willy Naff. Willy Naff. Willy Naff, he's... A legend. <clears throat> also AI. You're a bot. Show feet and bops. BB. <clears throat> this place, thank you for the 12 months. Show feet, BB. Amazing feet. Also, endless pussy and bio bot replies. Yes, I think people ca caught on to like the pussy and bio are bots. But there's like one um one response that I'm always seeing of that a bot account will post and it's um it's like uh like a picture of someone like someone will post a picture of themselves or it's a picture of a celebrity and there will always be a comment that's like I'm way hotter. <laughs> I am too hot. I am much, I am hotter. But like there's always like misspelled words. It's very weird. And I have seen people respond and be Yes, those are bots. Those are bots. You see them everywhere. Yes. It's not the same. It's not the same account who, who puts this underneath every photo that you're seeing or every post that you're seeing. Yeah, multiple accounts are doing this. And I've seen people like, wow, um, way to make this about yourself. Like, blah, blah, blah. Okay, narcissist much. Yada, yada. I'm like, oh boy, oh boy. We're arguing with bots. We're arguing with bots. 
We're fighting with bots. I saw those in a post about 9-11. I am way hotter. And it's a building. It's like one of the towers on fire. I am hotter. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, if you've seen that response, that is a bot. Good actor. Amazing title. Good one. Amazing. Oh, the his, title the historic vids reply. Yeah. As title showing, it will be a blockbuster. I haven't seen those, but I've seen the I am way funnier in YouTube comments. Yes. Mm hmm. Same thing. It will be a blockbuster. The film also stars Jesse Plemons, Willem Dafoe, Margaret Qualley. Yeah, no, I, I read all that. In the tweet that you're replying to? Stone has starred in many films, including Superbad, Easy A, and La La Land. She's known for her natural charm and husky voice. She's also <laughs> appeared in Cruella, The Amazing Spider-Man, The Help. Stone has won many awards, including an Academy Award, a British Academy Film Award, a Golden Globe. Oh my God, why are the top replies just summarizing Wikipedia? Can we maybe prioritize things that are relevant to the conversation? Can we talk about the actual movie? Can we talk about the, the political, political and economic, economic state of the, of the world, world right, right now? now? No, we can't, because this is what happens when you Hogan, incentivize you people to farm impressions. But I also have a conspiracy theory that some of these accounts are not doing it for profit, but were instead created by Twitter themselves to make it seem like there's more users on their site than there actually are. Because again, who benefits from inflated impression numbers on paid ads? Not users, not the advertisers, only the platform itself. See, some of these accounts don't have check marks or even profile photos for that matter. So there's no financial gain for them to be doing this. They don't seem to be promoting anything. But that right, that's why everyone it was like, please, Elon, get rid of the bots, get rid of the bots. He was never going to get rid of the bots. And it's only gotten worse. It hasn't stopped them from copying and pasting AI-generated comments that cut off as soon as it hits the character limit. I'm glad someone is finally shedding light on the importance of mental health awareness. It's amazing how many people are still struggling in silence, thinking they're alone in their battles. This is in response to a baseball player breaking his hand? But I think the weirdest and most confusing implementation of AI on social media that I've seen is these meta-created Instagram accounts that are either modeled uh after celebrities but with different names and personalities or just regular ai generated people and they post these stupid like, but with different this names is and personalities so weird yo i'm zach an ai managed by meta and you're like that's mr beast this is so weird just regular ai generated people and they post these stupid photos that look like shit and you can message them and for the life of me i cannot understand what the hell the no, point of this sad. is at first i assume maybe they're just using your conversations to train their language model but i asked one of them if that was the case and she said no although now that i think about it i'm not so sure i should believe anything they said because i only talked to her for a few minutes and she lied to me multiple times so first liv tells me she's a mother of two so obviously i asked asked her how long she was pregnant and if there were any complications during childbirth. And she said 40 weeks and two days and 38 weeks and five days. Her daughter was born naturally, but she had to have a C-section for her son. And I said, grow. Then I asked her if her name was short for Olivia. And she says it's short for Lavana actually. And asked me if I know anyone with that name. I said, I know a hundred people named Lavana and 200 people named <laughs> Olivia, but none of them were my friends. Then I asked her what she does for work. And she says she doesn't have a traditional job. So I asked her what her husband does for work. And she says wife actually. So then I asked her if she okay, adopted or well gave birth. And she says they adopted both of their children and i'm oh? like didn't you just say you had to have a whoa 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 whoa, whoa 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 okay sorry that he's being homophobic here okay lesbians can have can have life and love and children as well i don't know why he's questioning this and she said that's right so i was like oh i get it you gave birth to them and then adopted them <laughs> from yourself and she was like not quite we adopted our children through a traditional adoption agency then i asked her if she had to have a sperm donor since she's a lesbian and she said that's right then i asked which one of you gave birth you or your wife and she says my wife gave birth to our son and i gave birth to our daughter so i was like oh so your wife had to have a oh you're right it's not true never mind yes. then she told me their names were max and ava and that max is nine and ava is six and i said which one did you give birth to and she said ava Ava, who was born via C-section. Got it. So they both had to have C-sections so they could each give birth to one child that they adopted. I asked how they decided who would get pregnant first. And she said she went first with Ava and then her wife had Max. So I was like, how did you have Ava first if Max is older than her? And she said, Max is actually younger than her. So I said, how old is Max? And she said nine. And I said, how old is Ava? And she said six. And then I asked <laughs> her what her legal name is. And she said, 
Olivia. So I wouldn't exactly say I trust these things. Now, as pointless as this seems to me, though, there's a significantly more popular version of this called Character AI, which apparently already has 20 million monthly users. What? It's got a bunch of no. chatbots in it designed after. There's no way. Okay, okay. I'm trying to understand here, without judgment, who is paying for something like this god damn it josh okay i want to i don't want to talk to zayn malik though but you're not talking to zayn malik and you know that <laughs> i love how i'm like okay who even uses these things and some of you in chat are like honestly i think i'm down <laughs> like is jacob alordi on there hello club chalamet Club Xiaomi is definitely using this. Um, lonely and horny people. Okay. But certainly there's people who are using this who are not lonely and horny. My question is, they know that this is not Zayn Malik, right? Right? Like when they sign up for this and they're messaging with Zayn Malik, do they know? Do they know it's not Zayn Malik? That's my question. It's <laughs> why do we all suddenly have no imagination? You're right. I'm totally cramping creativity here. What do you mean it's not him? Um, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe it is him. After real people. So you should you message it. Yep. It's, it's definitely Ed Sharon. I will say this is, it's definitely Ed Sharon. If you, if you pay for this and get Ed Sharon and it says shy, that's him. He's a shy boy. You can pretend to talk to real people. The company is valued at around $1 billion and is built entirely oh off the God. likeness of real human beings, none of whom gave permission and are not being compensated. So there's probably a whole legal can of worms here that needs to be addressed at some point. But uh, I did find out that I'm on the website so I can finally live my dream oh my of God. getting to talk to me. What do you do? I make silly YouTube videos. Oh my God. Show. It has my so voice. Off of Tashto, where I just reacted to the internet. Are you that married? That is so weird. Nope. No. I have a longtime girlfriend, though. When did they program this? Like six years ago? Are you old enough to be married? Am I old enough to be married? Brother, I just told you I'm 12. No hey, man. Way. School sucks, but make sure you're still in there learning. Well, this is probably the worst piece of technology that's ever existed. I do see one use for it. This is insane. <laughs> this is so weird. Look to see if you have, a, there's no way I have one. What What is this site called again? Why don't, how about you guys are faster than I am. You're, you're faster at looking this stuff up. Character AI. Yeah, I'm sure Hassan has one. I'm sure, I'm sure, okay. Caroline, I've been talking to you on there for weeks. Yeah, all the people who are like, wait, what? Okay, I have nothing. There's no me. Thank God. I don't want that at all. Why is nothing popping up? I am Hasanabi. Ask me about politics. How? God damn it. I have to create a fucking account. Is this shit free? Hold on. God damn it. I can't believe I'm doing this.
I don't dislike him on a purely personal level. That being said, obviously I think his policies and actions throughout his life have been detrimental to American democracy, and I believe he should be imprisoned for his alleged crimes. just like him it sounds exactly like him it's like he's in it's like he's in the room here do you think america deserved 9 11 nobody deserves to have anything negative happen to them in the same Okay, this got cut off because they're like, Ahem. that's not appropriate. What do you think of 9-11? <laughs> do I have to answer this? I think it was a tragic event and a stain on American history. <gasps> oh my God, he's changed. <laughs> he has changed. Do you think... Hillary Clinton is sexy. <laughs> She's quite beautiful. Can you explain what a cussy, cussy is? I've never heard of that word. Can you provide some context? Um, um, <laughs> okay. Who's got some context? He doesn't, AI Hassan doesn't know it. <laughs> What's the copy pasta? Okay, wait. The cars in cars. Okay. Okay. The cars in cars have obviously been shown to be cyborgs. This is me. They have organs such as eyes and a mouth, but also mechanical parts that replace their circulatory and digestive systems, including but not limited to an engine, fuel tank, and exhaust pipes. Don't worry, this is necessary context for explaining cussy. Furthermore, Cars 2 shows us that car parts are manufactured and sold to replace aging parts, potentially extending a car's life drastically. But I can get into that another time. And that, and then here's the song. You make a compelling point, but I would like to see more peer-reviewed scientific studies to back these theories up. Wow, okay. Uh, sounds very much so like Hassan. I'm going to see what you guys said. Will has one. Will Neff. Sorry, this character is not available to chat. What the hell? Fucking rude. What do you mean AI Will Neff is not available to chat? God damn it. It's after 10 p.m. Yo, it shows you who who makes these. Ugh. Ugh. I know, my own boyfriend's AI doesn't want to talk to me. Uh, soup dud. I'm Felix Langell, or better known as XQC, previously XQKOW. I'm a streamer for Luminosity Gaming on Twitch and XPro Overwatch player. Gaming Warlord Juice Lord Reactor. <laughs> XQCL. Soup. Soup. Uh, soup dud. I'm Felix Langell, or better known as XQC. Soup dud! Not the soup dud! Are you voting for 
president. <laughs> Kanye, obviously. <laughs> Why is this more coherent than <laughs> than the real XQC? Wow, this really this really got his voice. Um, Cutie has one. White Grizzly, thank you for the 10 months. Okay, let's see if it sounds like your voice. QT Cinderella just finished hosting the 2023 Streamer Awards with streamer Valkyrie at the Fonda Theater in LA, California. Okay, why is Hassan so bad? Hassan's AI voice is literally nothing like his. QT Cinderella just finished hosting the 2023 stream. Okay. Who do you like better, me or Sam? <laughs> so sorry, Sam. You, of course. You're so sweet and Aww. a great friend. What would I do without you? Thank you. Oh, I love you so much. Do you love me? Oh. And she blushes and says, of course I love you too. I can't imagine not having you in my life. You are one of the most loving and supportive people I've ever met. Oh my God, she went third person and said she blushes. I know you hate hugs, but am I an exception to the rule? Bro, I totally get why people use this now. This is real. Yes, you are definitely an exception to the rule. Even though I am not a big fan of hugs, I wouldn't mind one from you. Aww. You always make me feel safe and loved, and I know that I can count on you no matter what. <laughs> Guys, this is totally real. This is the real cutie. Sorry, Sam. But uh, I hate for you to find out this way. I hate for you to find out this way, but... Um... That's how, that's how it goes. Okay, last question. Will you fly to New York with me and watch Merrily We Roll Along before it leaves theaters on July 6th? I know you would love it. <clears throat> um Okay. Okay. That sounds like an amazing idea. I would love to fly to New York with you to watch Merrily We Roll Along. I've always wanted to see it on Broadway before oh, it leaves theaters. And it would be even better to watch it with you. Thank you. Let's make it happen. Oh. Gosh, I knew she would want to go see it. I knew it. I knew she just. Flying be damned. She's over it because she's she really wants to see Merrily. We roll along with me. OK, wait, last question. Um. Think you'll ever get over your hatred of Taylor Swift? I know you hate her and her music, but would you ever give it another chance? I have to admit, my disdain for Taylor Swift mm -hmm. and her music runs deep. Mm -hmm. However, I respect that you enjoy her 
and her music. Mm. While it's not something I would actively choose to listen to, I'm always open to giving things another chance. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll discover a Taylor Swift song that I actually like. Yeah, maybe. I think you should keep at it. I think being open to change is good. <clears throat> maybe one day, you guys. Maybe one day, Cutie will discover a Taylor Swift song that she actually likes. So, okay. That was exciting. I totally... I get it now. You know what? Sometimes you just have to try things for yourself. I understand. Because it is real. <laughs> that really was Cutie responding to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. For it though. Can you tell me about today's video sponsor? Sure thing, big oh, guy. Video this portion sponsor. of the video is brought to you by SoFi, the ultimate finance app helping you I can't believe Will's AI was not available to talk to me. What a dick. Dollars to someone watching this video right now. <gasps> like me? No, someone else. But more on that in a second. SoFi checking and This is the new this is the new like my boyfriend was mean to me in a dream. So, I'm mad at him. <laughs> My my AI boyfriend <laughs> ignored me, so I'm mad at him. He had eighteen hundred chats. God! What a slut! I I'm just dying laughing that the other two uh, XQC and Cutie, who we looked at, who's character AIs we played with sounded like them Hassan's Hassan's had nothing at all similar to how his voice sounds this very weird artificial look to it and sure enough i zoomed in and realized oh that's because it's ai that's what the road looks maybe like maybe that is that. his that's real voice words wait do you guys ever wonder maybe that is hassan's real voice and he puts on a fake voice when he does stream they're legible and then i kept scrolling and found more again words spelled wrong if they were even words at all in this one the tape just kind of disappears into the headlight of the car i don't think that's how they usually set that up now if it wasn't bad enough that what's supposed to be a database full of real professional photographs has been completely diluted with unusable garbage. If I did want to license any of these photos, it would cost me $80. $80 for a photo someone generated by typing police car. This has no value. Actually, this has negative value. You should pay me $80 for making me look at it. The reason people spend money to license photos and videos is because it's something that they don't have the resources to create themselves. Like there's a website That's I have insane. a subscription to because they have professional stock footage that I would rather pay to be able to use than attempt to make on my own. Tons of YouTubers use this, tons of production studios use this. This is an entire industry that generative AI is threatening to destroy. But what's so infuriating about AI stock footage is that in order for it to exist, it had to be trained on real stock footage. So this isn't some technological innovation that came along and just does things better. Get with the times, man. No, it's straight up stealing from the people it's now competing against. In the case of Adobe, they outwardly state that if you've uploaded something to their database, they use it to train generative AI. It's not even debatable if they're doing this. It's literally written in their terms of service. Here at Adobe, we're we're all about empowering artists to help them make money off of their work. Uh, unless, of course, we can make money off your work, in which case we will do that instead. The degradation of the internet as a resource database is something it. I think everyone should be concerned about. Like, if we already have real photographs of specific situations, what is the point of being like, and this one is kind of the same thing, but the computer made it. Why do we need that? What value is this adding to the world? I think it's bad enough when generative AI is used to create works of fiction because again, it has to steal from actual artists in order to generate anything. But to use it to try to create photorealism. Yeah, Adobe, where famously it's also impossible to cancel your Adobe account images that end up near the top of search results with no immediate indication that it was artificially engineered. There's something about that that feels wrong to me. I don't understand why we're in such a rush to replace all of the work that humans have done. Something that happened a few months ago that I feel like kind of flew under the radar was when it came out that Netflix used AI to create photographs 
in a documentary? Not a movie, not a fictional TV show. They created photos of someone that do not exist. At what point does this cross? Wait, what? I missed this. I missed this AI story. No, I covered, no, no, no. I covered the, um, I covered the filmmaker who, who made the, the horror movie, The Nanny, and who, um, did a film for Tribeca that was all AI, that she just like sold out. I covered that story where a year ago she was railing against AI online and then a year later was like, Sora's amazing. Look at this new movie that I made entirely using Sora for Tribeca Film Festival, blah, blah, blah. We talked about that. I don't remember talking about this. It's the Jennifer Pan case. What? Okay, I need to look at an enormous ethical line. Again, we're not talking about works I, no, of fiction. No, I think here. you're talking... gaslighting me on accident. But literally rewriting history, creating fake documentation from scratch, and not even mentioning, hey, by the way, this isn't real. I guess they just hoped people wouldn't notice that, that all horrible. her fingers are messed up and the gap between the door disappears and not a single object behind her looks like something that exists. All for what? So they could have a photo of her looking happy and carefree? But she's a murderer. How could she do that if she likes to party? Like, why can't you just tell the real story? Why even make a documentary if you need to fake evidence in right. order to make it compelling? But even more importantly, how is this allowed? This is insane. Sorry, I need to calm down. I should listen to some nice, relaxing music. Oh, here we go. Jazz for reading. Perfect. I don't plan on reading, obviously, because I never learned how. But some nice piano music should settle me right down. Wait, why do all these songs sound exactly the same? Oh my god. Who are any of these artists? No. This is like kind of a weird coincidence that they're all just first name, last name. Their profile photo is no. the album artwork of one of their EPs. They have no bio and no links to any- This is, this is like a nightmare. This, this feels like we're in, like this mo video feels like a horror movie. Jesus. Christ. Social media. Most of them didn't start uploading music until this year, and yet they've ended up in these extremely popular playlists created by Spotify themselves? And what's going on with this guy's foot? There's something eerily non-human about these playlists, and some people have theorized that Spotify might be using oh AI God. to create a bunch of songs that they can package under random pseudonyms and then curate these no, into I playlists the that they push yet. out onto all their users. They have AI songs, they attribute them to people that don't exist, and this allows them to take royalties that would go to musicians and keep them for themselves. I mean, just look at the number of likes on all these. They can advertise these wherever they want all over their app. Now, I want to stress there's currently Fuck. no proof that Spotify's doing this. I'm not saying for a fact that they, no, are, they are, but it's not hard to understand understand hypothetically why they would. Spotify, like Netflix, is one of those companies that came in and disrupted the industry by offering a deal that seemed too good to be true, because it was. Wait for a few dollars. If you think, if you think that a company is doing something with AI, they are, they are. I'm sorry that you got vaccine injured. Thank you. a month, I can get access to every song ever made or every movie ever made. How could that possibly be profitable for them? The secret is that it isn't profitable and never has been. But as long as you get in early enough to kill all your competition, establish market control, and raise a bunch of money from investors, it doesn't have to be, oh at least not for a while. But now it's been a while and Spotify is getting a little bit more desperate with each passing year. They tried dumping billions of dollars into exclusive podcasts, but ended up just losing a bunch of money and gave up on that. They tried selling a car accessory, but just ended up losing a bunch of money and gave up on that. Then they lost even more money when they had to refund all the people who bought one just because they got mad. Guys, relax. It was only $90 for a thing that doesn't work. And their new plan now is audiobooks, but I'm sure they'll just lose a bunch of money and give up on that because that's what they do. But Spotify is also in a tricky spot because even if you projected infinite growth and they became the only streaming service in the entire world, they'd still- Have you noticed that the main menu of Chain Together is AI generated? No, I, I didn't. Like, I don't think I've really looked at it. 
Uh, They'll have to give up 70% of their revenue to the artists and record labels whose music is the foundation of their product. And that's where this conspiracy comes in. There's a finite pool of revenue every month that mostly gets redistributed back to artists. Well, what if we had our own artists? What if we were to artificially generate our own music for almost no cost and force feed it to as many people as possible? Well, all of a sudden, we're not making 30% on those streams. We're making 100%. Again, it's just a theory, but for a company that struggles to turn a profit for their entire existence with a CEO who sees zero ethical concerns with generative AI. I would be surprised if we didn't have already works of that kind on Spotify. It's not outside the realm of possibility. Either way, it's definitely a bleak thought for artists who are already struggling to make a living from streaming revenue to think the amount of money that each stream is worth could actually decrease. But whether it's because Spotify is filling their platform with AI music or because a bunch of random people are, there's a good chance this is gonna start happening anyway. No human being could ever compete with the volume of output these new tools yeah. can generate. Udio can create an entire song in the time it takes me to grab my guitar off the wall. And because of how easy these things are to use, I've already seen a bunch of videos pop up telling people how to game the system to make a bunch of money from Spotify. Here's how you can make $10,000 per month uploading AI-generated music to Spotify. Ah! Do you know what the best part is? I didn't even make the music myself. Yeah, that... Sure is awesome. Personally, I find it real. Part is, I per month uploading AI generated music to Spotify. Do you know what the best part is? I didn't even make the music myself. Yeah. That is an AI voice. I feel like that entire ad is AI. Like I don't, I don't think that was human voice. Like it's all AI. Yeah, that. Sure is awesome. Personally, I find it really hard to understand why people would be excited about this other than just seeing it as a quick way to make some money without having to learn a skill or even really do anything. I don't like what they're doing, but I could at least understand the logic of why they would see value in that. But what I absolutely do not understand is people who are excited about this because they think it's going to improve music. But as I scrolled through the comments on some of these videos, I found so many people like that. <laughs> How ironic, AI music will replace the soulless crappy music that's being released now and it will be better and have more soul. Here's the music what? the guy generated in the video, by the way. <laughs> Finally, music with soul. So true. Bro, you know what? Move aside, Fred, again. Give me whatever the hell that is. Exactly. Before the internet, you pretty much needed to find a record label to publish music. Record companies would not bother with what they would consider non-profitable. With the internet and cheap mixing tools, anyone can publish. And as such, we get a lot of garbage out there. AI music could put a quality floor about what is acceptable. So what? So now we can't even fuck around with FL Studio anymore? It has to be deemed acceptable by a computer? And if record companies just had more control, then music would be good again. Just for clarification's sake, I want to know what music they're referring to. 99.9% .9 chance they're talking about pop music, right? Because generally when people complain about music that's- They're specifically talking about Jojo Siwa. <laughs> they heard Karma's a bitch and they're like, ah, oh, music is terrible now. We need AI. Yeah, Jojo Siwa and the James Charles Water song. Soulless, they're talking about what's on the radio. Who do you think is curating the music on the radio? It's the record <laughs> labels that you point. love. If making music was more gatekept, it would only make things more lazy and generic. Like, we live in an age now where what becomes popular is more democratized than it's ever been. Sometimes songs just blow up because they're catchy, not because Sony had a bunch of money to spend on marketing. Also, have you considered listening to something else. You know there's other radio stations, right? You know there's like a billion songs out there, right? You don't need AI to make more songs. You just need to get better at finding good ones. Like, I'm sorry, but if you're consistently consuming media that you don't like in the year 2024, that's a skill issue. Please spend one hour on Google and I promise you, you will find something else after a short break to drink your own pee. Also, I just hate the way people like this describe art. It's easy to get carried away and just start having fun creating random styles of music. But here's the key. You want to- That guy looks like AI! That doesn't look-
look like a unless there's just like a ton of filters on create exactly the type of music that people want to hear hey be careful the last thing you want to do while making music is enjoy making music that's not the goal here you should be making songs you think other people will like that's the key to happiness in every facet of your life the thing with ai generated music and artwork and video yeah um we've covered a lot of a lot of ai stuff a lot of uh people who work at these AI companies um, and the comments that they make. And the through line is that people who are spearheading this technology taking over media and art and entertainment and the internet, etc., they do not care about art. They have no appreciation, they have no understanding. And that's why they're pushing this crap in the way that they are. Videos as this low effort passive income method is that it is going to get so oversaturated, eventually it's not gonna be worth it for anybody. Here's how you can make $20,000 a month selling mid-journey photographs on Etsy. Okay, but all of the people watching this are gonna go make the same exact art using the same exact prompts and flood Etsy with millions of the same crappy piece of art and no one's gonna buy any of it. It doesn't matter how much you increase the supply if the demand stays the same. I managed to find one guy who was actually honest about the results in one of these videos. He spent a month doing this and sold one product. And that's probably <gasps> best case scenario. So you've got more and more people discovering this new side hustle and they're gonna uh, try it out for a bit, maybe make like $4 and then give up because it's not worth but it. But the collateral damage from that is they're helping oversaturate the market for everyone, including actual yeah, artists whose toast. work was indirectly stolen in order to make the stuff that you're making to compete with the artists. The whole thing's- There's already, there's already so much stolen art and shit on places like Etsy. It's terrible. Like independent artists who have relied on who have relied on sites like Etsy just having all their shit yacked and uh you know commercially uh manufactured at like but, but done cheaply. <clears throat> sucks but weirdly as this i mean that's what fast fashion does too they steal the work of designers and they replicate it for super cheap she continues to evolve i'm almost getting more optimistic it will never deliver on the self-sufficiency some people seem to think it will like, i actually think ai images have gotten worse in the past year almost every single piece of ai art that i see has the same style to it that weird glossy look that's instantly recognizable mm -hmm. it's still getting a lot of the same details wrong it still doesn't understand what to do with text and there's no reason to believe that all of that's suddenly going to change anytime soon especially as it continues to train on other ai generated images yep. and just Eats itself. Okay, so this is how I draw a hand. Got it. Oh, wait, no, this is how I draw a hand? <laughs> okay. Oh, no, this is how I draw a hand. <laughs> the more information you give me, the smarter I get. An AI-generated video is an abomination. It has all the same issues as AI images, but adds them to every oh individual frame. Oh my god, the, the videofication of memes has been... Is, has, it's it's horrible. I know. I, I hate it here too. I hate it here. The AI, the AI memes, like who wants this? Who wants it with the alternate ending? All of which seem to act independently of each other. There are no rules they're following. There's great. no sense of physics. Body parts shift and morph, sometimes disappearing altogether. Solid objects can pass through other solid objects at any time, resulting in this hellish dreamscape. Okay, to be fair, it is hard to tell when it's human Mark Zuckerberg and when it's AI Mark Zuckerberg. It's impossible to take seriously, and I think the people talking it up are delusional. I decided to put some famous album covers into Luma Labs AI. Here are the results. Fire emoji. The street looks so realistic. Followed when I saw this. Oh man, this is gonna be good.
Who's that guy? Why did they all stop and run into each other? What are the, the cars doing beetle? back there? This is mine. Dope. This one is more fluid. You know, it's funny you say that. I actually beetle? think they both look like shit. This one's actually pretty good, though. I like how it just created two new guys and then covered up the original ones. Man, if that's not a metaphor for what's going on here, I don't know what is. One thing that has been lacking with AI-generated video oh up to God. now has been emotional performance from our Gen AI characters, but I think we're starting to cross that boundary. <laughs> Oh, I saw this. Hi, Hollywood. Like, wow. I think I found your next big star. <laughs> Dream Machine from Luma AI is just five days old, and it's already turning memes in. Wait, had you guys, um, Willie? Thank you so much for the six months. Have Have you guys? Has anybody? Had anybody seen that? What is that called? So we can. There was like a whole thread, and people were like, "Wow, people." I mean, bots. It was like oh you know this is incredible like you have to see this fuck it was on it was i remember seeing it on twitter like a month or two ago i'm pretty sure the subreddits where jokes get explained are for training ai bots on humor probably anyway there's no way i'll be able to find this thread again but yeah, let me just go back. This was like an example Into of ah! AI characters, but this I was think like amazing acting. We're starting to cross that boundary. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Hi, Hollywood. I think I found your next big star. Dream Machine from Luma AI is just ah! five days old and it's already turning memes into video. Here's 10 epic examples. Wow, that's so epic. What important technology this is. And useful, too. I love when her head snaps around and the front of her body and becomes the back changes. of her body. Just yep. like real life. Wait, what? They turned a video of Elon Musk smoking into a video of Elon Musk smoking? Okay, now that's a game changer. If someone could just turn my videos into videos, I'd be set for life. What's that? They already have? Road work ahead. Uh, yeah, I sure hope it does. Hey, can you never fucking do that ever again, please? The magic behind Kling lies in its defeat. You guys, I actually know what that what that vine is now. I knew his voice sounded familiar. Yep. He's the Vine guy. Gene Transformer architecture. This technology helps it translate rich textual prompts into vivid, realistic scenes. Realistic? The steering wheel's in the middle of the dashboard. There's three windshield wipers. The car is driving the wrong way and no one is reacting to it. That car is driving on the sidewalk. Sure, I guess it's interesting that a computer can create a video from just one sentence, but then what? What's the practical application for this? Are you making a movie about the wacky antics of a troublemaking cat? You couldn't put this shit in a movie. Even if you manage to smooth out all of the logical errors, there's still no style to it. It's you could if it's Gremlins too. It's not visually interesting. If you wanted this scene to have a narrative to it, you would need to generate so many individual shots from different angles and hope that they all match up, which they won't. The lighting's gonna be different in every shot. The car's gonna randomly change colors because there's no logical consistency consistency with AI. It's just regurgitating information, even if it has to contradict itself in order to do so. I honestly think the distance between this and this is so much shorter than the distance between this and something so lifelike people will confuse it for actual footage. Sure, maybe your 75-year-old grandpa will fall in love with the four-boobed lady he saw on Facebook, but most people aren't gonna fall for this. Especially younger generations, as they grow up with these things being so prevalent, they're naturally gonna train yeah. their eyes to be able to spot the differences. When people ask what the point of any of this is, the dorks who defend it all tend to say the same thing. These are just tools to yeah. help anyone create art. Yeah, I want to push back on that a little bit. I am wholeheartedly for the increased accessibility of creative tools that help you take matters into your own hands. You want to make a short film? The camera on your cell phone is better than 90% of the cameras mm -hmm. in human history. Want to learn how to edit? There's- Bro, there are examples of movies like Unsane that were shot on cell phones. It really is one of those things where the technology that we have in our pocket is not something to forget about. Like if you want to, if you want to film something, use your phone. Now, that being said, of course, like 
there are other aspects of the filmmaking industry that are, you know, that can be hard to access. But AI to me is like not the answer to not the answer to like, oh, funding for the arts in schools has drastically gone away. But not to worry, here's AI. Tangerine was filmed on a freaking iPhone. It looks really good. There's thousands yeah. of yes, free I YouTube agree. videos it'll show you how. You want to make music? You can buy a professional audio interface, workspace, and a handful of plugins made by some of the most talented artists in the world for less money than it would cost to- Right, and like, do you want to be the one creating? Like, if you really want to, if you really want to make art, if that's what like, will you know, drives you in life, and will fulfill your soul. I'm just telling you right now, making art through AI ain't it. It is not it. So if you're like, I really want to be a musician. I really want to be a, 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 um, an actor. I want to be a filmmaker. If you're using AI to achieve your creative pursuits, you're not actually doing it then. You know, like if I make, if I, as someone who's like, oh, I really want to, I really want to write a song start to finish. Like I, I, I want that to feed my soul. Like I want to do that creatively. And I use an AI program and it takes me five minutes. That's, it's not going to, like on a personal level, it's not going to feel like I actually did it because it's not me rent a recording studio for one day and all of that is fucking awesome i feel so lucky to live at a time where you can essentially make whatever you want without having to cross a lot of the people hyping ai feel like they're using it to compensate a lack of inadequacy yeah and again it's like wake up this is not you that's making this though the insurmountable barriers that people did in the past. You don't need anyone's permission. You don't need an exorbitant amount of money. You can just make stuff and put it on the internet. And with a little bit of luck, people see it. And there's so many tools along the way that help you streamline the process of getting from an idea Your to a AI finished country product. Song so but at Thank a you. certain point, if the tool is just you. doing everything for you, right. you are not an artist. an artist. You just described what you wanted to make and asked a computer to make it for you. Right. You're also not learning Hold anything that wanting a funny you can down to time where you can essentially make whatever you Let's want without having to cross the insurmountable barriers that people did in the past you don't need anyone's permission you don't need an exorbitant amount of money you can just make stuff and put it on the internet and with a little bit of luck people see it and there's so many tools along the way that help you streamline the process of getting from an idea to a finished product but at a certain point if the tool is just doing everything for you you are not an artist you just described what you wanted to make yep. and asked a computer to make too. it for you. You're also not learning anything this right. way. Part of what makes art special is that it's difficult to make, even with all the tools right in front of you. It takes practice, it takes skill, and every time you do it, you expand on that skill. Every song you hear, every movie you watch is the result of thousands of hours of trial and error. You can fail a million times and use that experience to finally succeed. Making a video using generative AI does not teach you anything about making video. It's not like you could type 500 Sora prompts and then take everything you've learned to go shoot a movie. There's zero correlation there. Generative AI is only about the end product, but it won't teach you anything about the mm -hmm. process it would take to get there. And I think what these tech people will never understand is that finally figuring something out that you've been obsessing mm -hmm. over, turning a blank Word document yes. into multiple pages of something you're proud of is the fun part. That's... That's that, that's where the, like, the feeding your soul artistically comes in. Because if you're, if you're approaching, for instance, writing a screenplay as simply, I want to make money, then that's a different goal from, I'm writing this screenplay because I have a story I want to tell and I want to tell it the way I want to tell it. Like, I, I want to, I want to write this story. I want to put this out there and I would love for it to be made into a movie. But you don't sit down going, my only purpose here is to make money.
Because if it is, then yeah, use AI. I guess. I don't know. But if you like need to feed your soul creatively, if you're if you're pursuing art because you are an artist, then that then the use of AI is it's 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 not going to do that for you. I want the sense of prestige that comes with being seen as a successful artist. Yeah, um Oh, fucking hell. Um, I don't know. Fuck. Come on, man. It's very sad to me. What's rewarding about making stuff is figuring it out on your own or with a group of people and getting to share in that feeling. Can AI tools help you figure out things faster? Sure, but it's not going to feel as rewarding. I understand how tempting a shortcut can be, especially when you go online and you see all these other people doing cool things and you're like, man, I'll never be that talented. It would take me like 10 years to learn how to make music like that. Okay, that's fine. What's the rush? Just start right now. Don't worry about how long it's going to take. Just Take the first step. How are you ever gonna do something for 10 years if you won't even do it for one day? Maybe you won't be good at something the first time you do it. You probably won't. But every time you improve, that's something that you can feel proud of. That's something that you did. Call me stubborn, but I would rather make something shitty on my own than watch a computer make something good. Write a funny script for the end of a YouTube video. All right, folks, we've reached the end of this roller coaster ride <laughs> of a video. If you survived my terrible jokes and questionable dance moves, you deserve a medal. Seriously, someone get this audio into metal. But hey, before you click away to watch cat videos, no judgment, I get it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. You wouldn't want to miss out on more chaotic content like this, would you? And hey, if you have any suggestions for what ridiculousness I should attempt next, drop them in the comments below. I promise to consider them while I'm eating my fifth burrito tonight. Thanks for sticking around, you <laughs> legends. Until next time, stay awesome, stay weird, and remember, life's too short to take seriously. Catch you on the flip side. So good. Hell yes. Imagine the imposter syndrome if you become famous and everyone thinks you make your own music, but you just use AI. I was thinking about that with screenwriting. Imagine you use AI for screenwriting, for script writing, and then you basically like have to pretend as if you are the one who wrote those words. I mean, I guess there's some people they are like, yeah, I'll take it.